Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of What's Driving Token Prices. I'm your host, Katie Talati, Director of Research at ARCA. For those joining us for the first time, I'm responsible for identifying and analyzing digital asset and blockchain opportunities for ARCA's funds. As part of our research, my team and I examine token prices and the market events that act as catalysts for price change. Based on our research and market events over the past week, here are some notable token price moves and what we think drove these moves. As a reminder, this commentary is not intended to be investment advice, investment research, or an investment recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. All right, well, we're back in another week. It's definitely been more range bound up and down with the market, but we're gonna go through a couple tokens for you guys today. So um, to start, I'm going to talk about Tensor. Um, so Tensor is the newest airdrop to hit the market this week, and it is a governance, and it is the governance token TNSR. Um, so Tensor, which launched in late 2022, is one of the largest NFT marketplaces on Solana and is frequently been labeled the blur of Solana. Um, despite this, Solana only makes up about 20 to 25% of total NFT trading volume. Um, and blur in a <clears throat> Tensor uh, processed about $140 million of volume in March. Um, so this was a lot of those long awaited airdrops. A lot of people had been using Tensor in the hopes of getting part of this airdrop. Also a lot of NFT collections were awarded. Um, some of the Tensor airdrops such as Mad Labs, um, and a few of the other Solana-based projects. Um, the uh, the, ten the, uh, ten the Tensor token debuted on Monday, um, and it came out actually first at about a $1.8 billion fully diluted valuation, which at the time was higher than Blur's valuation. So if you're not familiar with Blur, that is the um, big NFT marketplace on Ethereum. Um, it kind of introduced a lot of tools for trading large collections or doing larger volumes, and it has kind of captured a lot of the market. <clears throat> so... And as it as Tensor is labeled the blur of Solana, it's frequently compared one against each other. So, um, uh, basically, the market so the, ma the market has since repriced Tensor. Interestingly enough, and now both tokens sit at about um, at about a dollar fifty seven. Um, however, Blur fundamentally fundamentally outperforms Tensor um, since it did see about one point three five um, about one point three five billion dollars in volume in March versus Tensor is one hundred and forty million in volume. With that, Tensor is down 11% for the week. All right, next up, we're going to talk about Whale's Market. Um, I don't think I've talked about this one here before. Um, so Whale, Whale's Market is a pre-launch marketplace for trading tokens. Um, basically, the idea is that now with points, um, like kind of the new way for airdrop farming is called points farming. So people get um, points that, you know, kind of reflect what people should get. Um, in an airdrop basically by doing activity or using a particular chain. Um, Whales essentially allows people to kind of pledge their points ahead of time at a certain price to somebody else who will kind of take the other side of the trade. And the idea is that the points settle out for actual tokens and cash at the end of the, or when the airdrop occurs. Um, so Whales uh, had a bit of an issue this last week as they had to cancel one of the largest airdrops of the year. So Wormhole is a bridging project. They issued their W token last week via Solana only. Um, so as a bridging token, people from various chains were eligible for the airdrop. However, since Whales Market, um, the since the airdrop was only claimable on Solana, Whales had to cancel the Ethereum uh, people who um, used Ethereum addresses uh, to like pledge collateral and um, to provide points to because um, because they weren't set up for that. Um, so definitely unclear how many users were impacted in this case. The W airdrop for context went out to 400,000 users. So we assume is quite a bit. Um, but unfortunately the moves is definitely a blow to whales, which is kind of still in its infancy. Um, it's still an up and coming project. Um, but hopefully it can recover from this and do well in the future as there are many more airdrops to come. Uh, whales is only down 1.5% for the week on this news. Okay, next up, let's talk about Lido. Um, so um, a vote to institute a fee switch for liquid staking protocol Lido failed this weekend in a close vote of 56 to 44%. Um, so just like, there's been a lot of discussions on Lido, which is the probably, I think, one of the, lar the largest DeFi project, at least by TVL. Um, and it's the largest um, portion of Ethereum that's been staked to date. So um, Lido has, uh, Lido, Lido has been, um, <clears throat> Uh, Lido, Lido has had some discussions for quite some time if they should turn on a fee switch, which should essentially divert some of their revenue back to token holders um, or people who stake the Lido token, which is just a governance token in its current form. Um, so the discussions come up and again and again, 
Um, the forum, you know, did end up, the forum discussion got quite heated, actually. And uh, most people were arguing that turning on fees were going to keep Lido necessary, or sorry, keep Lido relevant in a time where it it's definitely been falling in um, its relevancy, especially when you've got all these cool, shiny new projects in liquid restaking, eigenlayer, et cetera. Um, and so a lot of people said, hey, we need this to keep ourselves, you know, at the top of our game and uh, grow. Um, on the flip side, others were arguing like, hey, like, you know, if we start distributing revenues, which aren't that great at, the, at this point in time, you know, we're sacrificing future growth at the Dow. Um, so the opposing, you know, again, um, all of this is, you know, kind of back and forth. Um, very interesting, though, to see that the vote was so close. Like I said, 56 percent voted no, 44 percent voted yes. You typically really don't see these close votes in governance much um, anymore. But, um, you know, we I'm sure this is not the last time we will see a vote on this topic. Uh, to give you guys context, the 30-day annualized earnings Toledo currently sits at about 130 million. So that's about what would be distributed to token holders. Um, and for context, because most of their fees are captured in Ethereum, as Ethereum price goes up, those earnings or revenue will go up. Lido is up 5.1% for the week on this news. Okay, last up, we're gonna hit about we're gonna talk about Ripple. Um, so Last week, payments project Ripple announced it was going to launch a stable coin that would rival USDT and USDC. Um, while it is unclear how Ripple's stable coin would differ from existing solutions, as the design describes a US denominated token backed one to one with cash and cash equivalents. By the way, that's basically what Tether and Circles USDC are. Um, Ripple CEO Brad Gerlinghouse did state that stable coin is the number one thing requested by its user base. Um, so if they did launch a stablecoin, Ripple would be up against some pretty stiff competition, such as um, Tether's USDT, which has AUM of 107 billion, Circle's USDC, AUM of 32 billion, PayPal's PYUSD, AUM of 192 million, and Paxos's USDP, AUM, AUM of 147 million. So it'll not be an easy road for them. However, they're up about 6.9% for the week. All right, guys, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoyed our insights. Tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token